بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم In the name of Allah the most gracious the most merciful أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وإذ قال إبراهيم لأبيه وقومه إنني بر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على النبي الأمي وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين We praise Allah سبحانه وتعالى We thank him for everything he has blessed us with Those things that we are conscious of and those things that we tend to forget We still thank Allah سبحانه وتعالى for everything he has given us and we send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his entire household, all his companions. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless them all and bless every single one of us. Ameen. My brothers and sisters, a beautiful evening in this beautiful city of Colombo, the end of the year 2014, and we are in the year 1435 Hijri. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept it from us. Ameen. The topic I've been given to discuss this evening is a very important, pertinent subject that is connected to our Iman. It's connected to belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it is connected to the message that was given to us from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by the one chosen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's important that we realize that the choice belongs to Allah. Who you are and how much you will have in terms of lineage in terms of looks in terms of wealth in terms of position in terms of ability and so on is in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ultimately it is his choice and sometimes we are to blame in the sense that the gifts that Allah has blessed us with we do not utilize them in the right direction so therefore you find a man given 
the health, given the ability, given the, for example, the intelligence, the intellect, and he does not use that to serve Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or to achieve that which will benefit him in this world as well. And this is why in the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he clearly makes mention of how important it is to seek the help of Allah when you want to achieve something in this world. He says, Ihris ala ma yanfa'u. Work hard to achieve that which will benefit you. Wasta'in billahi wa la ta'jas. And seek the help of Allah and don't be lazy. Don't give up hope. Whatever you have to achieve in this world, it will come with the help of Allah together with the dedication and the effort that you put in that is made up of the capacity Allah has blessed you with. Don't think for a moment that what I've achieved is from me. That would be tantamount to what Qarun did. You know, Qarun was a man from the nation of Musa alayhi salam. And his sin was one major sin. What was it? He was a wealthy man. He was given a lot, blessed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a million and one ways. And he said, this is from me. Which means Allah is out of the equation. He said, Qarun said, whatever I have been given is actually from the knowledge that I have. My brains, my wits, my intellect. I was... For example, I was the one who achieved everything and Allah says, no way. It is us who gave you the intellect in the first place. It is us who gave you what you have in terms of ability in the first place. If we wanted, we could have made you a cabbage. If we wanted, we could have taken the ability away from you. So whatever you achieve in this world related to Allah and whatever you would like to achieve, ask the help of Allah and use the capacity given to you by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then relate it to Allah. So the end of the hadith says, وَإِنْ أَصَابَكَ شَيْءٍ لَا تَقُلْ لَوْ أَنِّي فَعَلْتُ كَانَ كَذَا وَكَذَا فَإِنَّ لَوْ تَفْتَحُ عَمَلَ الشَّيْطَانِ أَوْ تَفْتَحُ بَابَ الشَّيْطَانِ when you have, for example, exerted every effort, you've used the energy Allah has blessed you with, you have used the capacity Allah has granted you, and still you don't achieve what you wanted to achieve, then don't say, if I did this, then that would have happened, and if I did that, then this would have happened, because the term if opens the door of the devil. Allahu Akbar. Yes, you may want to study how you failed in order that you do not fail in the future, but you do not sit and play the blame game, subhanallah. Pick up the pieces and continue. We all would have tasted some form of failure, perhaps in our lives, on different levels. But it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who intends for that to be a lesson for us, so that sometimes our wings are clipped as a gift for us, subhanallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us. That having been said, the most blessed or the most virtuous, the biggest gift ever to be given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was given to someone of Allah's choice. No one had a say in it. And who was this person? None other than Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it very clear that we have chosen the messenger. We are the ones who chose him. We bestowed upon him that which we have not bestowed upon anyone before him, nor shall it be bestowed upon anyone after him. This was Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So take a look at the verses I just read before, a few moments ago, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the gifts of Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the gifts of Allah from amongst them that which was given to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, the kuffar of Quraysh, you know, the disbelievers at the time, they looked at this man, they thought perhaps this man is an orphan, so he does not deserve nubuwa and prophethood. He does not deserve the virtue of Allah. Nay, Allah alone chooses. He takes some things away from you and he gives you other things. Subhanallah. With Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, father was taken away before birth. Mother was taken away in childhood. Grandfather taken away a few years later, two years later perhaps, and so on. So that beginning, if one looks at it, perhaps it might not look as the most favorable beginning. But it's the gift of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which we need to understand. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of the question that was asked by the kuffar of Quraysh. And Allah says, they said, listen to what they said. وَقَالُوا لَوْ لَا نُزِّلَ هَذَا الْقُرْآنُ عَلَىٰ رَجُلٍ مِّنَ الْقَرْيَتَيْنِ عَظِيمٍ The kuffar of Quraysh were baffled. Or they asked a question saying, 
why did Allah not reveal this powerful book known as the Quran to a powerful man from one of the big cities, Mecca or Ta'if? It should have been a very important man, a man who was the top of the village from the beginning. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responds to that question. Remember, in the question, there is acknowledgement of the Quran. You know, when someone says, what a powerful book, why is it revealed to this man? They are already saying it's a powerful book, but the question they have is, whom it was revealed to. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taught us in the Quran that those who have pride in them and who have arrogance and whose ego overtakes them, they will reject and deny the truth when it comes to them for one or two small factors that they might pick up. So in this case, the kuffar of Quraysh, Allah says, they do not belie you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa They know that what you've come with is the truth, but their arrogance has led them to deny we know that it hurts you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa what they are uttering. You know, people utter, they swipe. When a person has pride, the pride gets to a level where they begin to despise others. Everyone else is nothing. I am the one, I am the big boss. So the kuffar of Quraysh and the hierarchy within Quraysh at the time, they began to harm Muhammad ﷺ by calling him names. And that's the habit of a person who has pride and arrogance in him or her. You know, we have a problem with a brother. And instead of saying, you know, the respected brother or the brother has said this or this gentleman has done this. You know, if you look at the corporate world, they teach you how to deal with people who are irritating sometimes. A person comes to your business and they happen to say things. You, as a person who is dealing with this client, needs to be on a high level of character and conduct. So even if they call you names, you say, sorry, the gentleman has said this, or the gentleman has said that, or the lady has said this. You don't call them an idiot, because that would be degrading of your own level. But a person who's arrogant likes to use cheap words to refer to others. So they would say, look at this idiot, look at what he's saying. Why use the word idiot? SubhanAllah. Why use the word? It shows that you, you cannot acknowledge what Allah has blessed that person with all the test of Allah that he put right in front of your eyes. It's glaring. It's a test of Allah. Someone came and did something rough to you. How you react to it will determine whether you are close to Allah or distant. Subhanallah. If you know that Allah has blessed you with, your bread is not going to be buttered by that individual. Subhanallah. You don't need to get excited. It's Allah who controls it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows your success, your failure. He has determined to develop a link with him. He will grant you that. He will give you the favor. That's the favor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So these people, Allah says, we know that what they are saying would, is hurting you. Muhammad sallallahu was concerned more of the fact that these people are in misguidance and on top of that, they are uttering words that are really bad, which means it's driving them further away from the guidance. That was the concern. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَإِنَّهُمْ لَا يُكَذِّبُونَكَ We want to let you know, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa they are not belying you, they are not calling you a liar. They know you're not a liar. وَلَكِنَّ الظَّالِمِينَ بِآيَاتِ اللَّهِ يَجْحَدُونَ But they are oppressors and these oppressors here, they are just denying the verses of Allah. They are denying what Allah has revealed, it's denial. They know it's the truth. So this is the arrogance. This is the arrogance and this is why the verse I read a little bit earlier, SubhanAllah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, the kuffar of Quraysh asked the question, why is it that the Quran was not revealed to a powerful man from one of the two cities? Which were the two cities being referred to? Mecca and Ta'if. So it should have been someone like Abu Jahl, someone like Abu Lahab. Allah says, Ahum yaqusimuna rahmata rabbik. Are they the ones who distribute the mercy of Allah? Are they the ones who own the mercy of Allah? Are they the ones who own the distribution of the mercy of Allah? That's a question. In the Arabic language, it's known as istifham inkari, which means it's a question, the response of which is negative completely. So Allah says, are they the ones who are in charge of distributing the mercy of Allah or are we in charge? Who is in charge? Allah says, نَحْنُ قَسَمْنَا بَيْنَهُمْ مَعِيشَتَهُمْ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا We are the ones, we are the only ones 
who have decided and chosen their livelihood even in this world, subhanAllah. So it's Allah's choice. Allah chooses livelihood. Allah chooses position and rank to give you. Allah can drop you in a minute as He can raise you in less than a minute, subhanAllah. This is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we ask Him always to protect us. We ask Him to grant us izzah, to grant us you know, respect amongst fellow humans and at the same time not to disgrace us neither in this world nor on the day of judgment, subhanAllah. And this is why we know the verse of the Qur'an and we believe in it where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Surah Al-Imran, قُلِ اللَّهُمَّ مَالِكَ الْمُلْكِ تُؤْتِ الْمُلْكَ مَنْ تَشَاءُ وَتَنْزِعُ الْمُلْكَ مِنْ مَنْ تَشَاءُ وَتُعِزُّ مَنْ تَشَاءُ وَتُذِلُّ مَنْ تَشَاءُ بِيَدِكَ الْخَيْرِ إِنَّكَ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٌ Say, it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Malik al-mulk. He is the owner of mulk, dominion, kingdom. He owns absolutely everything. He owns authority. He has the authority. He will grant elevation or kingdom or dominion or authority to whomsoever he wishes. And he will snatch it away from whomsoever he wishes. Take a look at the globe. Not only in our lifetime have we witnessed recently changes, so many changes, and all that goes to show is the power of Allah. Those who thought that perhaps they were in a position of comfort for the rest of their lives and generations to follow, the comfort was snatched away overnight. Who could bring it back to them besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues to say, He gives elevation to whomsoever He wishes. And he drops down whomsoever he wishes. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. All goodness is in the hand of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All goodness is in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Indeed, Allah is all able, all capable. So the answer that was given to the kuffar of Quraysh is that you do not control. You are not in charge of the mercy of Allah. It is Allah alone. So stop being jealous. Stop being a person who is in denial because denial is a sign of pride and this is why if you take a look at the hadith of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu found in Sahih Muslim where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa made a powerful statement and you know what he said he says لا يدخل الجنة من كان في قلبه مثقال حبة من خردل من كبه wow what does that mean the sahaba radiallahu anhu heard it and they were worried because do you know what it means he will never enter Jannah in whose heart is a mustard's seed weight worth of pride. He won't enter Jannah. Now the Sahaba radiallahu anhum were worried. Because you know, just like you and I today, if there's a man walking with beautiful clothing and as he walks past, you know, mashallah, the perfume is smelling quite well. And you know, people look at him and say, look at that brother, he's arrogant. Just because he's driving a Jaguar and just because he's wearing, you know, designer clothing, for example, or he's got perfume, that was a worry, it was a concern. When the hadith says you will not enter paradise, if you have a mustard seed's weight worth of pride in you, the Sahaba radiallahu anhu, one of the narrations say it was Mu'ad ibn Jabal radiallahu anhu who asked a question. Other narrations make mention of different names. The question was, O oh Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we love, we love that our clothing and our conveyance be good, you know, a man from amongst us would love that the clothing is decent, you know, and the, the shoes, you know, are good. What I wear should be nice, you know. Subhanallah. A man from amongst us would love for our clothing to be good, our shoes to be nice. You know, we want conveyance, for example, in our language and our terms. We want to have a posh home, a posh car, a posh, mashallah, phone, a posh everything. Does it make us proud? It means we're not going to be entering Jannah. And immediately the Prophet ﷺ says, Inna Allah jameelun yuhibbul jamal. Wow. Allah is beautiful and He loves beauty. So what does that mean? He continues to say, Al kibru batrul haqqi wa ghamtun nas. Pride is when you deny the truth that is glaring you in the face. When you deny the truth, the undeniable truth, you deny it. That's pride. And when you despise people, despise others, that is pride. 
So this is a clear-cut explanation of the meaning of pride. So today, if a person is walking with a beautiful, uh, for example, a mobile phone, or they are dressed in proper clothing, and they are, you know, smelling good and so on, that does not automatically make them pride, proud. That is a gift of Allah. It is the condition that that gift of Allah makes you, that would determine whether you have pride or not. If I have a lot, and then I decide to start despising people, and like I said a few moments ago, and I'm going to use the word because it's common. They say, you know, I'm walking and I'm wealthy, and I look at a man as, who's that idiot? Why did you have to say idiot? Because you've got money, that's what it is. Your money makes you feel that you can call others an idiot. That is pride, that is arrogance. That is what is being spoken about when we say nose in the air and feet off the ground. You think that you can breathe air that is slightly fresher. Trust me, if there has to be a small earthquake, Perhaps the same idiot will come to your rescue. Allahu Akbar. Then what happens? Then what happens? So never underestimate this. We go as far as saying even to the non-Muslims, we are not allowed to use those type of words. You cannot call a non-Muslim using derogatory terms because you are an ambassador of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. How dare you use words he would not have used. May Allah forgive us. Really. We need to attract people to the goodness and the true teachings of Islam through the goodness of our tongues and the character of Muhammad How would that be the case if we looked at a non-Muslim and we turned our heads away and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says so beautifully in Surah Luqman وَلَا تُصَعِّرْ خَدَّكَ لِلنَّاسِ وَلَا تَمْشِ فِي الْأَرْضِ مَرَحَا the value of the advice of Luqman is such that Allah makes mention of it in a surah named after him, Luqman the wise. So Allah says Luqman was telling his son, you know, giving him advice. One of the pieces of advice connected to our topic today is do not turn your cheek away from the people. You know, I, I can actually do it for you. To be honest with you, when a person is walking here and we just, you know, you actually turn your head, who do they think they are, you know? Who am I? I don't even want to shake. You know, I recall having shaken the hands some years back of certain people and they give you two fingers like you're going to steal their fingers, you know? <laughs> Perhaps they might want to look at their hand to count their fingers after you've shaken hands. Allahu Akbar. They give you two fingers. When I saw the brother once again, I just, from a distance, I just put my hand, you know, Salaam Alaikum. And I continued walking. But now, you know, a few years down the line, he'll come running. Oh, Salaam Alaikum. How are you? You know, would you come to my home and so on? Hang on. I've got to understand that something has made this man realize, I hope, subhanAllah, that you know what? Allah gives whomsoever he wishes and he takes away from whomsoever he wishes. And this is when you realize, when you are up there in wealth, in power, it's just a short period of time. It's a short period of time. But that's why make the most of it with humbleness. So that the day you come down to earth, at least there'll be a trampoline bouncing you. It's the second time today we're talking of the trampoline, subhanAllah. At least it will be bouncing you, mashallah. You'll enjoy coming down and going back up a little bit again. And coming down, and you know what the trampoline does for you? It takes you below the ground level. Why? Because it's going to propel you up in a few moments. Subhanallah. So this is being happy with the decree of Allah. Allah chooses for you to give you, so that He tests you how have you changed when you are given. And Allah then takes it away, so He tests you how will you change when it's taken away from you. What happens to you? So this is why the value of the advice of Luqman alayhi salam is such, it's mentioned in the surah, the whole surah mentioned after him. Don't turn your cheek away from who? This is the point I was raising. Allah did not say, وَلَا تُصَعِرْ خَدَّكَ لِلْمُسْلِمِينَ You know, don't turn your cheek away from Muslims. So it's okay if you do it to others. No way. Allah did not say that. Allah says, وَلَا تُصَعِرْ خَدَّكَ لِلْنَاسِ do not turn your cheek away in pride from the people. Which people? All people. An nas means people. Subhanallah. That means if there is a non-Muslim, the same applies. Even if he is bad to us, we are taught to be good to him. Because tomorrow, if he were to declare the shahada, he becomes our brother in deed. And that's what the Quran says. And even if he doesn't declare his shahada, his account is not to us, but it is to Allah. He is answerable not to me, but to his maker, just like I am answerable to my maker. Perhaps in the dying moments of his life, he could have uttered the shahada. Who knows, he might be in paradise before you, and you would have cursed him even beyond the point of death, to the degree that when you arrive in the akhirah, you'll be shocked to see him way ahead of you. 
Allahu Akbar. Way ahead. And this is the man we were despising. Well, may Allah forgive us, really. So Islam is a beautiful religion. We reach out to others. But in order to do that, we need to understand the concept of pride in Islam. Never, never let it overtake you. No, the people you see around you who are involved in manifest error, they are your brothers in humanity and sisters in humanity to start with. Sometimes they are your brothers in Islam. What we do, and this is something, it's a sickness that the globe has today. And it's part of the problem of the Muslim Ummah. We are taught to look for any reason that brings us together. We are taught to look for any common point that will make you and me feel that we are part of one brotherhood. Yes, we will have differences, we may discuss the differences, but we are taught to look at each other and to try and come to common point. Even if I have one common point, mashallah, you are my brother, alhamdulillah. Don't we share the shahada? Yes, we do. But today, we have reversed that to the degree that we are searching for the smallest point to take the man out of Islam. And we are ready to call him a kafir because of that. May Allah forgive us. Really, that is the sickness, that is the disease. That is why we are flopping and failing. It is pride, it is arrogance that makes you do that. Subhanallah. Take a look at the people at the time of Musa alayhi salam. You know what they were saying? Fir'aun, what did he say? Am ana khayrun min hadha alladhi huwa mahin wa la yakadu yubin Allahu Akbar He's talking about Musa alayhi salam and he says Am I not better than this lowly person? What a low person? You know, it's, it's more or less a swear word referring to Musa alayhi salam and he says he can't even speak to save himself, you know meaning Musa alayhi salam used to stutter slightly that was a test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but there is a gift of Allah I need to make mention of. Those from amongst us who stutter, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cure us all. When it comes to reciting the Quran, suddenly the stuttering goes. It's a gift of Allah, it's a miracle. Even the doctors have studied it and they have confirmed that the recitation of the Quran is free from stuttering. If you know a surah off by heart and I tell you, read Alhamdulillah, Surah Al Fatiha, and you know it properly, you won't stutter. Miracle, subhanAllah, it's the word of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Musa alayhi salam, that having been the case, it was a test for those around him. You know Allah raised the man. Let's see how you respect him. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of the derogatory terms used by Fir'aun against, Muhammad, against uh, Musa alayhi salatu wa salam. And this is something that teaches us a lesson. Because when a person is proud and arrogant, do you know what happens to them? Person who's arrogant, despising people, he feels that he is on a mountain above everyone else and everyone, you know, looks very small from the top of the mountain. When you're right at the top of a mountain and you look at the others, how do you see them? They look very small, very, very small. And guess what? They don't even know that you're there. They're busy working, doing their work and so on. So if you were to fall from the top, you are hurt and injured unless they caught you. Allahu Akbar. And if they fell, perhaps they would get up and continue walking because they were low on the ground. So this is why you protect yourself from being aloof when you have position. No matter who you are, no matter what you are, no matter who you, what you have, no matter who you know, no matter what position, whatever it is, the gift of Allah, the authority you have, the wealth, the good looks you have, the type of spouse you have, the children you have, it can come crashing to the ground in a moment if Allah wills. So keep on thanking Him for it and keep on asking Him not to take it away. The Prophet ﷺ used to say, Oh Allah, I seek your protection from something known as zawali ni'mati, which means I seek your protection from the snatching away or the moving away, the taking away of your ni'mah, your gift, your favor upon me. You favored me. Who am I? Listen to what Allah says. أَوَلَمْ يَرَ الْإِنسَانُ أَنَّا خَلَقْنَاهُ مِن نُطْفَةٍ فَإِذَا هُوَ خَصِيمٌ مُّبِينٌ Does man not see that we have created him from a droplet of sperm? And suddenly, 15 years later, he wants to argue and debate about us. Allahu Akbar. Imagine, 15 years ago, my son, you were not even in existence. Allah says, هَلْ أَتَى عَلَى الْإِنسَانِ حِينٌ مِّنَ الدَّهْرِ لَمْ يَكُنْ شَيْئًا مَذْكُورًا Did a time not pass for man when he was nothing to be mentioned? You know, today people refer to you as he. They refer to her as she. They refer to something else as it. We were neither of the three. We were not even in existence. And 15 years down the line, 
We want to argue about Allah, debate, become arrogant, proud. My son, you are not going to take in your grave anything, not your Levi's jeans and not those undies that you are showing from those jeans. Allahu Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. May Allah bless us all. And not your phone and not all the beats that you are playing on the phone that's bouncing you and that bounces your vehicle at the same time. Allahu Akbar. Someone sent me an advert today. Toyota advert with an Igo. And what it does, the back wheel, the back, you know, the, the, the wheel lifts off the entire, you know, it, it lifts off the ground completely and water is at least as though it's a dog pee. And really, I saw this advert, I was shocked. What is it? To despise people. Imagine it, it, the advert shows a young man with an eye go, you know, and he's trying to say, I go, you know. So what's the eye go all about? He says, it's a lovely small vehicle and he parked next to a huge vehicle, you know, one of those huge vans, big one. And the guy in the van is a big burly guy and he just wanted to prove a point. So he lifts the car and the water starts releasing. Allahu Akbar, and people are surprised. You might Google that and find the advert. Allahu Akbar, may Allah forgive us, really. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. I found the music a bit too much and that's what actually made me mute it. But the message that I learned was, you know what? It's up to you how you use technology. Some can use it in order to degrade others, whilst others would use it in order to serve the deen, to serve Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah forgive us. Imagine I want to prove to someone that I'm going to pee on them. How dare? Tomorrow a real dog may pee on me, then what's going to happen? That was not prepared and planned by man. That was something that an animal did. It's a disgrace, but it's Allah who chose for that to happen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us and guide us. So the ahadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa the words of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa have taught us to be humble. If there was anyone who had the right to be arrogant or proud, it would have been those who were blessed the most, but they were the most humble. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa was the most humble. The messengers were the most humble, subhanallah. Imagine, they used to throw dirt and defecation on his back, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And how did he used to respond? He responded by getting up, getting it off his back, washing off his clothing and carrying on. Not even a word to be uttered. Why? Because he knew. Allah's blessed me. I don't need to prove a point to anyone. Allah's given me. I don't need to show, right guys, I'm the man. I'm the man. You are not the man. It's Allah who's the God. It's Allah who's the giver. Related to Allah. Through the blessings of Allah. That is why when you are given something, you are taught to say, Masha Allah, Alhamdulillah, Tabarakallah, all praise be to Allah, thanks to Allah, glory be to Allah. These are the words. Why? You are blessed. You thank Allah. There is something known as sujood, a shukr, to fall into prostration, to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? You relate it to Him, not to you. You can be as sharp as you want, subhanallah. You know, it is something known as at tawfiq. Tawfiq meaning to have the acceptance to do the right thing at the right time. That's Allah. So that is why when we say, oh Allah, grant me the tawfiq, it means, oh Allah, grant me the acceptance to do the right thing at the right time. That's what it means. And so you have examinations tomorrow morning. I've got to study biology and I haven't studied the entire year. Okay, I'm not trying to say you should be lazy. Let's say I haven't studied the entire year and I'm making dua and I get my books and I say, oh Allah, help me, grant me tawfiq. And guess what? I start reading and I've only read about perhaps a quarter of the syllabus and I fall off to sleep. And if I were, subhanallah, granted that acceptance by Allah, what would happen? Tomorrow morning, here come the questions. They are only from the quarter that I read. Allahu Akbar. And here comes another guy who swatted the whole year and the questions that came were the, just the ones he missed. I'm sure I see a lot of people smiling. You know exactly what I'm talking about. It's known as tawfiq. It's from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Subhanallah. You know, it's Allah. And this is the gift of Allah. How it happened, it's just Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, speak to the cricketers and they will tell you subhanallah that you know, I can go out for a duck and I can be the world's best cricket player, mashallah. I can't. And what happened? I don't know. It was Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That was just Allah telling you, hang on, no, relax, it's from me, not from you. Yes, you use your capacity, capability, but related to Allah, Allah, you bless me with it. Don't take it away from me, Ya Allah. MashaAllah, we're blessed to have Muheen Ali with us this evening, alhamdulillah. So, my brothers and sisters, something great and grand, it's a gift of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Never let it make you feel that you are more entitled than others. No. Subhanallah. You know, I want to give you one simple example. I was traveling in one of the Middle Eastern countries 
a long time back. And I happened to cross the border. And when I was coming back, I wanted to cross back into the country that I was, that I had left from. And it was the time of Jumu'ah. And they told me, you have a Zimbabwean passport, you actually need a visa to go in. And I told them, but hang on, I was here about 10 days back when I was crossing and no one told me this. I crossed and there was no visa. He said, no, the law has just changed two days ago. <laughs> now I have a flight to catch and I'm making dua to Allah. And I say, Ya Allah, help me. Ya Allah, I'm in need. Here, my, my entire family, they are not affected because obviously they have a different nationality. But with me, SubhanAllah, help me, Ya Allah, what am I going to do? I've got a flight to catch and I need to return home. And so it was the time of Jumu'ah and the Adhan went. And mashallah, there was a masjid in the border post. And so I went and making dua to Allah and I sat down. And the Imam spoke about, now this is called the help of Allah. Not from me, nothing at all. The Imam was speaking about helping people in desperation. Helping people in need and how Allah will assist you if you assist someone who's desperate, who's in need. And guess what? There was a man next to me who greeted me. And I greeted him back. And uh, subhanallah, I greeted him, I acknowledged him and so on. And at the same time, in fact, I greeted him just before the, the talk had started. And then I greeted him immediately after the talk. And I, I nodded my head, smiled at him and so on. And we started our salah. We were standing in the saf, straightening, you know, the, the feet and the, 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 the toes and whatever else. And I started my salah and I ended. And when I finished, I made a dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, oh Allah, I don't know. It's only you that's going to help. And so what happened is, I came out, I had hope in my heart, but I was also making a plan B, you know, to say, let's go back and we'll do this, we'll change tickets, perhaps leave from the, another city altogether. And as I went in, I told this brother who was behind the counter that, look, you know what, please, I need your help. He says, only my boss can do it for you. So can I see him? He says, yeah, well, you can, maybe. You can enter that door and if he is there, you are lucky. So I went by the door, there was someone cleaning. Knocked on the door, the door opened. Who was the boss? The man who sat next to me just at the time of the khutbah and salah and he read right next to me. And guess how I started my story? Salaamu Alaikum. You know, you can, you can remember the smile, can't you, you know? <laughs> so I looked at him and I'm, I'm saying to myself, let me try and choose the best way of convincing him such that he will not be able to say no if he has a heart. I said, you know, mashallah, I'm in need. I'm desperately in need. And I'm convinced Allah will send the help. And I hope and I pray that help can come through you at least so that inshallah, you know, I will be able to at least cross here. He looks at me and he thought for a moment and I'm quite certain that the words of the Imam were ringing in his head. <laughs> and then he tells me something. He says, you know, you're right. It's only from Allah, not from me. He wrote on my, in my passport, this man has been given oral permission to enter the country. You know, the Arab nation, some of them, they have this. I don't know about now, but I'm talking of quite a while back. So, he, and he wrote it. I went to the front, the man looked at it and smiled. He stamped it and let me cross. As simple as ABC. But my life was coming to an end, basically, if that didn't happen. If not to an end, but what I mean is, you know, it was going to be quite difficult. And then I told myself, I said, you know, this is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Imagine if we didn't greet. Imagine if I just sat. Imagine if he didn't greet. It was his quality. He was a big boss. I didn't even know. But he greeted. And this is what helped. And I greeted back. And this is why I remember. Sometimes we are arrogant. We don't want to. It's shaitan that overtakes us. We are human. We need to check it again. Make sure you remove it. Fight it. Fight it. Be humble. You know, I've seen people with mega wealth. And you'll never pick up that this man has wealth. And I've seen people with next to nothing and they, they have their first thousand dollars and next thing they feel like, SubhanAllah, I'm Bill Gates, Allahu Akbar, Bill Gates. I always used to wonder why Bill Gates is so wealthy. But then I realized that the dollar in America is called the bill. Have you thought of that? It's called the bill. So he's the one who has the key to the door, Allahu Akbar. That's perhaps him. But for us, Allah has the key. Allah has the key to the door. We don't need the green bulls, mashallah. We need entry into Jannah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness of the dunya as well as goodness of the akhirah. So, this is the fruit. When we have a little bit, sometimes we don't want to talk to someone. And a few moments later we realize, guess what? This person is in charge of something. Something. And guess what? They are 
They might not have as much as you, but they have some form of post that at the moment you need. Allahu Akbar. I recall in Zimbabwe back in the days, we had difficulty, no bread, no milk, no water, no electricity. The electricity goes, well to this day we, we actually struggle with electricity and water, whereby it actually goes every single day. Mashallah, beautiful nation does not snatch the beauty away from the nation, but it's a nation where, mashallah, dinner by candlelight is something great. That's why our marriages work, alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. So, subhanallah, I recall back in the days when it was worse, those who were of high character and conduct, there was always someone who made a plan for them, for the bread, for the fuel. You know, it was possible, for example, to phone someone and say, listen, we've got a very important function. This electricity, would, is it okay if you turn it off a little bit later? SubhanAllah. If you had that, you know, relationship with someone, perhaps, it worked. Allahu Akbar. May Allah grant us ease and goodness. Notice I'm wording it very carefully because I don't want to be told, hey, who do you know? Just now people will start asking questions. So my brothers and sisters, if you look at some of the gifts of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when a person denies them, Allah takes away other things from them. For example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, He who is proud, he who is arrogant, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala switches the light of guidance off from that person. سأصرف عن آياتي الذين يتكبرون في الأرض بغير الحق. Those who are arrogant, haughty on earth, those who think they are it on earth, Allah says, we turn our signs away from them. They miss them. What was the sin of the man? The sin was how he treated fellow human beings. So Allah says, we didn't like it. How he carried on on the earth was so bad that he was not fit to actually receive and achieve the guidance. So Allah says, وَإِن يَرَوْا كُلَّ آيَةٍ لَا يُؤْمِنُوا بِهَا وَإِن يَرَوْا سَبِيلَ الرُّشْدِ لَا يَتَّخِذُوهُ سَبِيلًا وَإِن يَرَوْا سَبِيلَ الْغَيِّ يَتَّخِذُوهُ سَبِيلًا Allah says, such a person, the one who is arrogant on earth, the one who goes around on the earth, walking around with his haughtiness and trying to flex his muscle here and there, we turn away our signs from him such that when he sees the path of righteousness, he turns away from it. When he sees the path of goodness, he turns away from it. And when he sees an evil path, he treads on it. And Allah explains that's because he belied the signs of Allah, the messages of Allah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not do that to us. So bring yourself down and Allah will elevate you. Man lillahi rafa'ahu Allah. Whoever humbles himself or herself for the sake of Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will raise such a person. Not only in this world, but in the next. We would not like embarrassment in this world, would we? Well, to be honest, the bigger embarrassment is the embarrassment of the Day of Judgment. May Allah protect us from it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safeguard us and may He grant us goodness. My brothers and sisters, that's just one verse that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made mention of. There are several other verses. In fact, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, those who do not want to worship us, are considered arrogant, proud. They have a problem. What is the problem? They don't want to worship their own maker. Allah says, I am telling you to call out to me and you don't want. And I am the solution of your problems. Your Rabb is telling you, call out to me. I will solve your matter. I will answer you. Then Allah says, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَسْتَكْمِرُونَ عَنْ عِبَادَتِي Those who are too proud to do that. Those who are too proud to call out to me, to worship me. Allah says, سَيَدْخُلُونَ جَهَنَّمَ دَاخِرِينَ They will be made to enter hellfire for a long, long time. May Allah not do that to us. Imagine a person knows that Allah is the solution and he doesn't want to worship his own maker. This is why we say the concept of Godhood in Islam is such that no one can deny it. Who do I worship? Whoever made me. Who made you? The one and only. We call him Allah, the worshipped one, the inevitable, the most forgiving, the most merciful, the controller, the one who created, nourishes, cherishes, sustains, the one in whose hands lies every form of goodness that I will achieve and the one who will protect me from evil, the one who will grant me Subhanallah, this is Allah. 
you know that and you still don't worship him? Are you too shy to worship Allah? You know, sometimes it's the time of Salah. And we are so shy that we don't want to fulfill Salah because our colleagues are non-Muslim. Let them see you do it. Who comes above? Allah or them? Allahu Akbar. Don't be too shy. Allah calls it an arrogance. Allah says, put things where they belong. I am the one in charge, not them. When you die, will that help you? Or will the Salah help you? Will what you did to please me help you? Or what you did to please them against my instruction help you? You know, you're allowed to please people on condition that it is not in the displeasure of Allah. You know, your wife asks you to do something. Mashallah, yes. Subhanallah, I'd suggest you actually did it before she asked you. You know, she won't tell you, buy me a rose. But if you buy her the rose, it, it has a greater impact, subhanallah. And you know, as religious as you are, you may want to hide it behind your back. It's romantic and guess what? Yes, it's permissible, mashallah. It's okay. You know, you can see the bearded guy is doing the thing. So what? Mashallah. You know, I'd like to see a WhatsApp clip of that at least, inshallah. Instead of the, the WhatsApp clip doing its rounds, we spoke about it earlier today with, with religiously clad people who might be pinching mobile phones and so on. May Allah safeguard us. That's not good. We'd rather choose something that would be, you know, a point showing people that Islam is not a dry faith. And you know, we should just stick into one area and that's it. You know, keep on saying Subhanallah until the day you die. The, the term Subhanallah is so valid and so great that if you were to worship Allah correctly, it is equivalent to you having remembered Allah throughout your life. I remembered Allah. This is why Allah calls it dhikr. Dhikr means the remembrance of Allah. And the best dhikr is the Quran. The Quran is the best remembrance of Allah. It is you remembering Allah. Not just by time, but I remember Him at all times. Consciousness is part of the remembrance of Allah. Taqwa Allah. That is remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, giving us a warning and at the same time giving us good news. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. A person who does something after being told to do it, yes it may hold value, but it would be of greater value if we did it before we were told. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking you to worship Him, to call out to Him. Sometimes we don't do it. Do you know why? Because everything is on our plate. The plate, mashallah, has everything in it. But there are two things that happen. The greed of man sometimes makes him call out to Allah. Trust me. The greed of man. You ask a man, he'll tell you, Allah's blessed me with everything. Mashallah, that's a good way of saying things. But every night he's making dua, oh Allah, give me more. Ya Allah, I've got this deal. Two billion was dealt with just the other day. Ya Allah, another deal of four billion. Ya Allah, help me. And another guy's asking for 40 rupees on the other hand. Subhanallah. Look at this. A man who's got everything, but his greed, meaning man's nature to want more, Subhanallah, will make him call out to Allah, brother and sister. It is not wrong to call out to Allah for as long as the condition of your heart is correct. It is not wrong to have 50 billion for as long as the condition of your heart is correct. But it is wrong to have even 5,000 if the condition of your heart is wrong. People have something small, you know, like you have a small man syndrome. I don't know if you've ever heard of that. You have a person who's got absolutely nothing, but he thinks he's a big deal. Why? I've got my phone. So he starts talking and saying, yes, transfer 3 million there, and transfer 4 million there, and transfer 5 million there. And people are just looking at him, wow. <laughs> and the women are flicking their hair, you know, to try and attract his attention. Next thing his phone rings, brr, brr. <laughs> A sharp from the lot will say, oh, dual sum, dual sum. Hang on, my brother, even the dual sum doesn't ring like that. Allah, <laughs> Allah. Allah, forgive us. That's a small man syndrome. You're trying to act big for nothing. You know, if someone else has been blessed by Allah, don't get angry. It's a sign of pride when you get angry. All these sins connected to the heart are quite closely related. It's just that some of them manifest it in a different way. They are shown in a different way. Subhanallah. So sometimes you have a person who's blessed. When we look at him, we become jealous. The jealousy sometimes makes us arrogant. We want to despise him. So as soon as people say, MashaAllah, that man, you say, he made his money through drugs. Relax. He's blessed from Allah. Allah gave him. Whatever he touched turned gold. Subhanallah. Whatever he touched turned gold. That's what the kuffar of Quraysh, when they could not digest the fact that Muhammad sallallahu was chosen by Allah, they called him what? They said, he's majnoon, he's mad. Then they said, he's sahih, he's a magician. 
And then they said, no, he is possessed. And then they said, no, he's after women. And, and, and they started raising personal issues against Muhammad wasallam, knowing that, you know what, Allah's blessed him far higher than us. And they knew in their hearts he's got. But because they were worried about their own status and position, no one must come and have more than us. So we must find fault in the man. And they started saying things and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we have protected your reputation and your person and yourself from those who try and scoff at you, those who try and raise fault with your person. We have protected you from all that. Don't worry about it, ignore it, continue doing the work. And this message is for us all. Allah has given you. Don't worry about the detractors and those who have something bad to say. If it is untrue, continue in your life. If it is true, seek Allah's forgiveness and still continue. But remember, your bread is not buttered by them. Like I said, the sustenance you have is not connected to them. I recall a gentleman who went to one institution and he was making a donation and he used to make a donation. And there came a time when he wanted something to happen his way and they refused for it to happen his way because it was wrong. So what happened as a result is he said, I'm no more donating here. And when he said that, subhanallah, the institution and the fathers of the institution said, it's fine. It's one of those things. What can we do? We are not going to, you know, jump to your tune when it's wrong, subhanallah. So if that's what you want, alhamdulillah, may Allah grant you acceptance and goodness and barakah and guidance. It's your decision. So the man walked out. As he walked out, another gentleman walked in for the first time. And he says, you know what, I'd like to make a donation. And guess what? The amount was double that of the guy who walked out. Look at how Allah kicks one out and brings the other. And Allah speaks about this in the Quran. Allah says, if you are not going to be thankful to Allah, you're not going to worship Allah in the proper way, He will swap you with others. Listen to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. And it's something that we need to ponder over. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, the end of Surah Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allah says, if you are going to turn away, you people are going to turn away, we will swap you with others. We will bring others in your place and they won't be like you. They will be humble, they will be down to earth, they will be softened, they will be people who have good character, good conduct. You can be changed anytime. You are not indispensable. You are a person whom Allah can replace anytime. And so am I. So thank Allah He's used you. Thank Allah He's blessed you. It should draw you closer to Allah. So the point I was raising is, sometimes we as human beings do not call out to Allah because we've got everything on our plate. But when Allah loves us, he taps us, a little tapping. What is that tapping? He takes one thing away from us. So suddenly, mother passed away. May Allah grant her Jannah. Suddenly, child passed away. Suddenly, huge accident. Suddenly, something else happened. Big loss. Suddenly, someone said something that affected you in a big way. That was Allah tapping you to say, come back to me. You're going a bit too far. Allahu Akbar. That was Allah tapping you to say, come back to me. You're going a little bit too far. So that night we call out to Allah. We cry, we read Salah, we do Tawbah. We are making istighfar. We look at the beggar. For the first time we see him as a genuine person. In fact, we feel so sad to say, I want to give out a charity. The beggar that comes to my door every Thursday or every Friday or whenever it is. Where is he? But you used to rebuke him every week. Now you're busy saying, where is he? The man who used to come along with the tin, where is he? When I was at the shop, I always used to see a sign saying, your change can make a change. And they're looking for your change, a few little coins. Your change can make a change. The day I decide to give it, the tin is not there anymore. Allahu Akbar. It's a test from Allah. You are softened up. Allah is going to say, you're going to have to, or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may choose for you that you're going to walk the extra mile to get to it. But when it was there, you did not appreciate it. It can happen and it is still a gift of Allah because you have not died in the wrong condition. It's a gift of Allah. You know, I, I know of a person who lost a leg. May Allah grant us all good health. I mean, and it softened him up to the degree that he is such a noble person, such a good man. Subhanallah. 
And one would think that perhaps the loss of that leg is drawing closer to Allah. And we wouldn't be wrong to think that. This is what Allah does. He's blessed you. But when we turn away from Allah, Allah calls it istikbar. A person who is arrogant. Look at Iblis. Iblis was the most arrogant. When Allah ordered him and instructed him to do something, what did Allah do? Allah instructed him to acknowledge the status given to Adam alayhi salam. That's all. The same thing happens to all of us. Allah instructs us to acknowledge what he has given the other person. He's a boss, he's got wealth, he drives a better car, he's got a better family, he's got a prettier wife, he's got this. Don't become jealous. You know, don't let that make you despise them. No, not at all. The sins are connected. Look at what Iblis did. Pride, arrogance made him jealous. It made him deny. He, he said, no way. I am never going to accept that this man is higher than me. So Allah says, أَسْتَكْبَرُتَ أَمْ كُنْتَ مِنَ الْعَالِينَ Allahu Akbar. What's your problem, O Iblis? Allah is asking him, Are you arrogant? Have you become from amongst those who are denying the reality? It's right there in front of you. You can see it. Subhanallah. Or are you haughty? You're too high to come to the ground, you know, to accept the reality. This is pride. And this is why Allah admonishes him. Immediately he says, Ana minhu. I'm better than him. I'm better than him. That's pride. That is pride. The minute I feel I'm more entitled, I'm better, and so on, that is pride. Your ego, you have a problem. Allahu Akbar. You have your nose in the air, your feet perhaps off the ground. And Allah describes it beautifully in the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Surah Al-Isra. When you walk, walk correctly with humbleness, humility. You are not going to create a big hole into the ground with the stamping of your feet. Nor are you going to reach the mountains with you tiptoeing, thinking you're higher than everybody else. You never. There are things that are higher than you. And there are things on the ground that are more secure than you are. Subhanallah. Don't let it make you think for a moment that you are the one and the only one. Allah has definitely blessed people more than you in certain ways. And He has definitely blessed you more than others in certain ways. But we need to look for those things. We need to thank Allah. Sometimes a man is blessed with wealth, but he doesn't have health. Sometimes a man has health, but he doesn't have wealth. Subhanallah. And sometimes a man has health and wealth, may Allah make us from those. Ameen. I didn't really hear the Ameen, or is it the air condition? Subhanallah. May Allah grant us ease and goodness. Ameen. So my brothers and sisters, these are the gifts of Allah. Let's never deny them. Let's never ever turn away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because do you know what he says? He says, the abode of the one who denies the truth is hellfire. That's a warning. Is there not a place and a spot kept in hellfire for those who are proud and arrogant, who deny the truth and despise others? That verse is just a warning. It's a warning from Allah telling us, don't despise people. They are human beings. They are also the creatures of Allah. And this is what we forget. You know, you see a dog. You cannot just start kicking a dog and throwing stones at it because it's a dog. No, it's a dog. And the word dog, depending on how it is said, can either be a swear word or it could be different from that. Can I give you an example? If you look at someone and you say, dog, what are you trying to say? It's a swear word. But if you look at something and say, doggy, doggy, what happens? Allahu Akbar. The same dog you're referring to, but one sounds a little bit sweeter than the other. I'm not encouraging you to use doggy to refer to your loved ones. Not at all. <laughs> we are Muslimin. We don't use that, mashallah. But I'm only giving you an example that the same word can be used depending on your heart and your expression to mean two opposite things. Do not use those words to refer to others. Don't. It doesn't help you. What did you gain from it? This guy's a monkey. May Allah forgive us, really. May Allah forgive us. Why did you have to use that word? Allahu Akbar, you're the one who's climbing the tree, not him. Allahu Akbar. You don't say that. Leave it. I recall that once I was sitting uh, with a few friends and there was a boy, one of the guys who was sitting there, he kept on saying, ape, ape. And I'm thinking, what is he saying, ape? For everyone we talk about or something that was happening, he just says, ape. And I tell him, brother, what do you say? He says, those guys are apes. 
And I think, subhanAllah, what's on with this? How, what are you achieving by calling them apes? I tell you what, you are the same kind, so it makes you an ape as well. I swear, we are the same kind. You call me a monkey, trust me, I, I perhaps I'm more handsome than you are. Allahu Akbar. May Allah grant us all goodness and good looks. Alhamdulillah. I don't mean it in that way, but I, all I mean is, you know what? When you look at someone and you call them something, consider for a moment that you are the same species. So if they become dogs, subhanAllah, you were perhaps there before them. And you might know how to bark even better because that's what you just proved. <laughs> My brothers and sisters, it's beautiful to be a Muslim. It's beautiful to have rules and regulations governing how you live. It's beautiful to be disciplined. That is Iman, that is Islam. That's why today we are saying reach out to humanity at large with your character. Protect yourself from pride and arrogance. We know that the Iman we have is indeed a very great gift of Allah. But you and I do not have a guarantee that we will die upon the condition of Iman. We don't have the guarantee. This is why the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ also makes mention of Iman. Allahumma thabbitna ala al-Iman wa amitna ala al-Iman wa hshurna yawm al-Qiyamati ma'al muttaqina ma'al Iman. Oh Allah, grant us a life full of Iman. Grant us the death on Iman. Why did Muhammad ﷺ have to say that? He didn't need to say that. But it was a lesson for us. Oh Allah, I don't know the condition of myself when I die. And subhanallah, when I die, let me die with Iman, because that is the gift. And this is why pride is forbidden in this world. But the day of judgment, when you are granted your book on your right hand, that is the day you will be allowed to be proud of your achievement. You will be happy and you won't need to despise anyone because subhanallah, you already have it. You know, like sometimes the English language does not have words that translate the Arabic. So if we take a look at people's wording when they say, I'm proud to be a Muslim, and you hear the young boy tell the father who has just said that, the father says, I'm proud to be a Muslim, and the boy says, I learned at the madrasa that you're not allowed to be proud. Pride is haram. Wow. What it means in that context is I'm happy to be a Muslim. So we say, I'm happy to be a Muslim, I'm proud to be a Muslim. I'm proud to be a part of you this evening. It doesn't mean I'm proud to be a part of you this evening. No, I'm happy to be a part of you this evening, subhanAllah. We thank Allah for this. So the, the wording sometimes, depending on the context and how it's used in the language and so on, it would perhaps mean something different, but your condition is what will display. Some people, when they are put into a corner, they get upset and angry and they start showing their power. That's a test from Allah. You don't need to show who you are. Do you know what I can do to you? That, that question alone shows arrogance and pride. You know who I am? That question alone shows arrogance and pride. We don't need to know who you are. You're a human being who is in need of the mercy of Allah just as I am. Subhanallah. If He wants to snatch it away from you, He will snatch it away from you. Subhanallah. So thank Allah for whatever He's blessed you with. And don't ever try and threaten people and despise them. Resolve your matters. Come together. Let's serve Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let's serve humanity at large for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Trust me, if the Muslims were to live Islam, the world would have reverted and converted. If the Muslims were to live Islam, the world would have turned to Islam. The problem with us, may Allah forgive us, really. Like I said, with our own family members, with our own brethren, we've got too much. Without realizing, meaning too many issues, Without realizing my brother, my sister, the day your eyes close and you go back to Allah, you are taking nothing back with you, nothing. Zero, no. Allah's not going to say all accountants get onto that corner, we'll take accounts differently because you guys know what accounts are all about. Never. All doctors go that side there, we're going to take your account separately, no. But Allah says, those who struggled and strove, those who developed a link with us, those who have one of the seven qualities and characters, those who were great, who protected themselves for the sake of Allah, we will grant you the shade on this day that everyone needs it. Then we are speaking. You can't say that I died, subhanAllah, while I was wearing designer clothing or beautiful perfume, so now that means when I get into my grave, uh, you know, I'm safe. No, it's got nothing to do with that. That alone shows us that when you are concerned about the day of death, it makes you a humble person. Very humble. 
this is why they say if you want to become humble and you want to protect yourself from pride constantly remember the day you were helpless when you were young and the day you will be helpless when you die when I was young, a baby, I was helpless. I came out and subhanAllah, I don't even recall. But people had to look after me and so on. And imagine if, if they knew that a few years later, I'll be flexing those muscles. I wonder what would have happened. Allahu Akbar. You know, your father, your mother, subhanAllah, they looked after you. And 15 years later, I'm using 15 because it's the middle of the teens. Sometimes a bit earlier nowadays and sometimes even later. You know, they say normally you mature out by 20. I know people who are 60 years old are not yet mature. Allah forgive us. That's a gift of Allah. But may Allah forgive us and may He never make us from them, meaning from those type of people, and may He make them as well from amongst those who earn Jannah, who can correct themselves. We all need correction. In fact, that brings me to a solid point. One of the signs of pride and arrogance is when you don't want to be told and you don't want to be corrected. It's a sign of pride, arrogance. A man comes and tells you, my brother, you know what? Uh, I saw you reading Salah. But you know, when you go down in sujood, this is how you're supposed to do. Who do you think you are? Shut up, okay? Naudu billah. What did you just say? You know what I said. And your face, and your words, everything is spoiled, messed. Because it shows that the heart, the condition of the heart needs changing, man. No matter how much you know, you will be corrected. Subhanallah. You need to accept correction. And you need to understand you're just a human. And all human beings make mistakes besides those who are protected by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Subhanallah. So don't be too proud to take instruction, to take learning. No. Do not be too proud. This is what they say. So this is why understand, subhanallah, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has favored some of us above others. You know, a school teacher is a school teacher. Perhaps he will need, he will teach the whole world so much. But on certain points, he will also need to be taught. SubhanAllah. And we continue learning up to the end. A person is a professional in his field. He will be able to teach the world in that field. But he will have to learn in other fields and perhaps even in that field to excel. If you feel bad when you're corrected, it's a sign of pride. And at the same time, it is an ingredient of failure. You will not be able to succeed. So thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Imagine, take a look at the Sahaba of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Those who were wealthy, they had a lot. They had much more in terms of material wealth than you and I. You know, take a look at the life of Abdurrahman ibn Awf radiallahu anhu. One of the wealthiest of the Sahaba radiallahu anhu. Did it ever make him arrogant? No. Did it ever stop him? from coming to Salah and standing in line with the rest of the believers. No. Did it ever make him feel entitled to block off a section of the masjid just for himself? No. Did it ever make him feel that he was above the rest so he could do something others couldn't? No. Never. That was Abdurrahman ibn Awf radiallahu anhu. And examples of those are many. I was going through the lives of the companions of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa and I noticed they had more wealth than a lot of us put together. And I think a lot of people don't know this. There was a stage when they didn't have, but they came a stage later on when they had so much that subhanAllah, if we had it, one wonders what we would do with it. You know, millions of gold coins. Millions of gold coins. And who was this man? He was a Sahabi. He was a companion, a muhaddith. He used to say hadith. He used to teach the people. He was humble. He used to walk the streets. People could talk to him. May Allah forgive us, really. So these are some of the gifts of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon us. And this is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us in so many different ways. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness and ease. May He make us from those who are always humble, down to earth. May He make us from those who understand the, the, the path that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has asked us to walk upon. And may we be from amongst those who are accepted to walk upon it. Remember, it's from Allah. And it is Allah alone who will grant us. Never become jealous of others. Never start hating people just because of what Allah has blessed them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about Ibrahim alayhi salam in the Quran. And Allah says, if people are becoming jealous of others because of what Allah has blessed them, then they should know that Allah has blessed Abraham and his family. May peace be upon them. Allah has blessed them with so much. 
He gave them wealth, he gave them kingdom, and on top of that, he gave them prophethood. And this is why some people became jealous. When prophethood came to Muhammad sallallahu what did they say? They said, why is the son of Ismail favored over the son of Ishaq? May peace be upon them all. And what happened as a result? They just denied the truth. They said, no ways, we don't want. Why? Because it's his son, not my son. It happens to us. You know, I was seeing a little clip on WhatsApp once again, where a man becomes so upset because his son has all A's and one B. All A's and one B. And he says, wow. He looks at the A's and he's excited and at the bottom he sees one B. And he says, no ways, that's not acceptable. The other guy's son got this and that. My brother, when your son becomes a surgeon one day, and I've said this a few times before, do you think the person whom he's about to slice is going to say, hang on doc, did you get all A's or was there one B there? <laughs> not at all. If you, even if you say, look, I failed four times, but then I passed. Is he going to say, I don't want to be cut by you? No. Subhanallah, you come with a reputation that is given to you by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, my son, mashallah, he did quite well at school. And I told him, son, I don't need you to come first. I just need you to try. And wallahi, it helped so much. I need you to do your best. Why? Because I know only one person can come first. Does it mean the other 29 in the classroom are all failures? One person will come first. You'll do good once, you'll come first once. Perhaps you might come second. You know, the competition is by 0.25 of a mark sometimes. So, subhanAllah, you didn't make it. Congratulate the person who did it and carry on. But what happens, a parent who has this pride that is unacceptable in the heart will come to the teacher and say, why was my son not first? Whose son was first? Maybe they're doing magic. Allah, it's happening amongst the Muslims. Perhaps they went to do magic against my child because my child is not performing. Hang on, your child performed very well, but the other child did well as well. And mashallah, they did something else perhaps. No, shaitan comes to us and makes us think, no ways, my son should be first. Relax. Who do you think you are? Allahu Akbar. The question won't be asked by us, but it should be asked by yourself. Who do I really think I am? That is also someone else's child. Allah blesses people with different capacities. Some people have a photographic memory and others don't. Some people, like I said, you've been blessed with something that perhaps others don't have. But because you haven't recognized it, you become jealous of what they have, not realizing they actually don't have what you have. Allahu Akbar. May Allah help us understand His plan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you all. Inshallah, we meet again soon, perhaps tomorrow, in the same venue, perhaps at the same time. If Allah gives us the opportunity to do that, may Allah forgive me for anything I may have said that might have been out of turn. And at the same time, I thank you for having seat, you know, been seated so silently and attentively for so long. Jazakumullah khair. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad.